This is the ECE 1215 lecture on boost effects. The first effect that I'll discuss is the electroharmonics LPB1. This is a simple boost effect circuit that increases the volume of your signal while supposedly keeping the tone unchanged. It was meant to be placed before vacuum tubes in an amplifier to get the tubes to distort more. In reality, the characteristics of the effect itself add some tone to the signal because transistors can saturate. The schematic of the LPB1 is shown here. The input initially sees a load resistance of 1 mega ohm and a decoupling capacitor of 100 nanofarads. The base of the transistor is biased into class A operation using a 1 mega ohm resistor placed between 9 volts and the base and a 100 kilo ohm resistor placed between the base and ground. The load resistor for the common emitter amplifier is 10 kilo ohms. There is also an emitter degeneration resistor of value 390 ohms. The output is decoupled using a 100 nanofarad capacitor and is also connected to a 100 kilo ohm potentiometer providing volume control. The combination of the 100 nanofarad capacitor and the 100 kilo ohm potentiometer form a high pass filter with cutoff frequency 1 divided by 2 pi times the value of the capacitor times the value of the potentiometer which gives roughly 15.9 Hertz as the cutoff frequency. This is slightly below the 20 Hertz threshold of human hearing and we always like to have the cutoff frequencies for high pass filters be below 20 Hertz so that's good. Here we see a schematic of the circuit recreated in LT Spice. In this simulation I'm performing an AC frequency sweep from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. I'm also using a slightly different transistor in the original schematic, it's supposed to be a 2N5088. That doesn't exist in LT Spice. I'm using a 2N5089 instead. The behavior should match pretty closely, though. So when we see the graph of the output, we can see that the input down here is at 0 dB, which is what we would expect. The output, above about 100 Hz, stays at a constant level of roughly 26 dB, which is a factor of 20. So that's constant up above 20 kilohertz. So the next boost effect that I'll discuss is the MXR M133 microamp. This is also a single knob pedal that just has gain. This effect, according to MXR, is meant to compensate for volume reduction in a long signal path or meant to be switched on during a guitar solo for volume boost. Here we see a here we see a complete schematic of the microamp circuit, with credit given to the artist here. This is based on an op amp rather than a transistor, as you can see, providing more linearity. I'll discuss the various parts of this circuit in the upcoming slides. So first, let's take a look at the power and input jacks. The artist actually used a power jack for the guitar input, which is a little bit misleading. The battery, as you can see, is connected between the middle terminal of the power jack and the middle terminal of the guitar jack. Now for the power jack that's correct because when a power plug is inserted this portion of the jack will be disconnected from the battery allowing a wall plug to power the circuit and the battery will be disconnected. The input jack actually looks more like this for the phono plug input coming from the guitar meaning that when the negative end of the battery is connected to the ring and a plug is inserted, there's a short formed between the ring and the sleeve and as you can see here the sleeve is grounded, meaning that the negative end of the battery is not actually connected to ground and powering the circuit unless a plug is inserted. This ensures that power is only turned on when a cable is inserted, saving battery power. Not a lot of guitar pedals are solely powered by batteries anymore but in the case that they are, this would save battery power. So let's take a look at the complete power circuit now. We first have a diode connected between the input and the actual 9 volt rail. That just protects the circuit from a reversed power supply. 
Two 100 kiloohm resistors that form a voltage divider create a bias voltage of 4.5 volts. There's also a capacitor just placed in parallel with one of those resistors to provide some low pass filtering. That low pass filtering is done because the power jack is most likely coming from the wall and you're going to have some ripple from the 120 hertz frequency of the wall supply. So here we see the main amplifier circuit, which is really just a non-inverting amplifier. The 4.7 microfarad capacitor here provides decoupling between the main part of the circuit, which is biased up to 4.5 volts, as you can see, and ground. The 47 picofarad capacitor here acts as a low-pass filter, removing interference. The gain of the entire circuit is set by the ratio formed by all of these resistors and is going to be V out over V in is equal to 56 kilo ohms plus 2.7 kilo ohms plus whatever the value of the potentiometer is divided by 2.7 kilo ohms plus the value of the potentiometer. So there's a wide range of gains available to us. All right, so looking at the input, we initially see a 22 mega ohm load resistor, a 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor, and a 10 mega ohm bias resistor. The combination of these two elements forms a high pass filter with cutoff frequency roughly equal to one hertz. That's pretty low. The output then is decoupled using a 15 microfarad capacitor and the combination of a 470 and a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Again, this is a high pass filter that gives a cutoff frequency of roughly 1 hertz. On this slide, you can see a recreation of the circuit in LT Spice. Again, I'm running an AC frequency sweep from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. As you can see in the slide with the lowest gain setting, that means that the volume knob, uh, the potentiometer, was turned all the way to the left, the gain is not zero, but it's at about half of a dB, which is almost nothing. Now if we look at the gain at the highest setting of the potentiometer, it's at roughly 26 dB, or again a factor of 20, similar to the LPB1. This does have a roll-off at high frequencies and at low frequencies, which may provide a little bit of tone shaping. Okay, so that's all for the simple boost effect lecture. These effects really are just simple amplifiers that you learned about in electronics classes, and that's what they're most useful for. Uh, the next lecture will be on distortion effects.